Hello everybody and welcome to the a little bit late news video on the Dragon Ball Feature Festival, the new Dragon Ball Feature Festival number four, Goodbye Dragon World, or as they've called it for some reason, Super Dragon Ball Festival. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a new type of festival. Uh, compared to old feature festivals, it's a little bit on the small side, but it's about what we've expected from recent events, early 2021 events. Um, I would say they're quite generous in this event. So maybe that's why it's like Super Dragon Ball Fest. I don't know. Uh, but as the name would suggest, we're talking about the very last arc of Dragon Ball. Uh, not including Super or GT or anything like that. So let's talk about what's actually in this festival. Um, a lot of good units to be fair. A lot of good units. Um... First off, the Goku Ticket Campaign. So we get 59 free summons, and you get a free 5-star guaranteed every 10th summon on this banner, except for the 59. 59 is its own separate thing. Uh, I've got the banner down here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 59, all guaranteed 5-stars, and there is a small chance you could get a Dragon Ball Limited. The ones they've shown is the legendary Super Saiyan Goku and Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, but there's there's others on there. So an opportunity, perhaps. Uh, I don't imagine many people will get that lucky, but you never know. You never know. Um, in order to get those tickets, 34 of them come from login bonus. So make sure to log in, obviously. And this special surpass your limits ranking campaign um we've had a few of these before you start at a certain rank and then you have to earn items from either missions or from clearing stages and you use those to level up your rank until you get to the top rank in this case we are going from martial artist uh, up to saiyan super saiyan 1 super saiyan 2 and then super saiyan 3 and if you do that you will get the tickets that you need it's down here as you can see you will get all of the goku tickets or the last of the Goku tickets needed to get up to 59 after you include the Dragon Ball login bonus tickets. Um, these are relatively easy. Um, even if you have a bit of trouble beating the Bora's stage, uh, we don't know Margin Buu's stage if it's that difficult yet because it's not out yet, but um, even the Debora stage is a little bit tricky, especially if you're a beginner. Um, but you don't have to beat the highest difficulty. You just have to get him... Six star rarity, level 99, and clear any of the stages three times. Not that hard. Not that hard. And none of this is that hard. Um, so just make sure you do all these missions. And uh, get yourself your Goku tickets, because you, 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 otherwise you're missing out on six free five star units plus a bunch of others. Um, what's up next? So this is a new daily mission during this event. And uh, you get a Dragon Ball training book every day that can level a character up to level 99 from level 1 at 6 star rarity. So definitely worth doing if you're a beginner. Because I know at the start, while they are quite generous with like the Evolver materials, booster materials and such. Nowadays, there's so many characters you're going to need to max out. It actually becomes a little bit tricky. So that one will help you. That one will help you. Uh, we have the Gohan Goku Goten Day campaign, which is on right now. They're giving us rubies for logging in during Gohan Goku and Goten Day. So, um, hopefully you logged in yesterday, you've logged in today, and hopefully you'll log in tomorrow. The daily stage, I think this is quite a popular format for daily stages. They did the same thing during the um, Kateko Hitman Reborn event, where you clear the stage and you get a ticket that gives you a free multi on this gacha here. And this gacha has jewel fragments and tickets and a bunch of good stuff but more importantly it does help you stock up on useful items beyond just the the goodies and the rewards again if you're a beginner you're not going to have a big stock of scrolls or jump souls or books so just just it's an easy stage clear it every day yeah you get some re uh, rewards for clearing it as well some books some jump souls and stuff but then you will also get a summon on this gacha a multi summon even more goodies. Even more goodies. Next up, we have the Jumpy Grand Return Festival. 
so this is a it, it's not really an event <laughs> they throw around the word festival a lot it's not really an event they're just giving out 3,000 rubies um, which is good don't get me wrong it, it's good um, so this is like a thank you for the all the new players and all the support over the course of the anniversary the anniversary was a long event um, and I'm guessing a lot of people spent a lot of rubies over the course of that event, especially during the Demon Slayer part at the end, where they had all these Demon Slayer gacha one after the other. Um, well, as a bit of reimbursement, I suppose, 3,000 rubies plus some other rewards. You just have to log in during this period to get 1,500 rubies. Um, you also get the triple tickets uh, for the latter part of the event, which is starting on the 20th. Um, and those again, just more free summons, more guaranteed five star tickets, essentially, uh, plus other units sprinkled in there. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So we can tell by the fact that that each goes there, that it, it's the standard pool. So should be good, should be good. Um, and then these missions, which are going on right now, you can do like half of these now, a bit over half of these now, I think. Um, and please make sure you do these because these are very good rewards and in this case like i said getting deborah to six star getting deborah to level 99 not that hard getting him to max luck as a beginner might be a bit more difficult as for margin boo again his stage isn't out yet so we don't know for sure um but it could be a little bit trickier but these things should be given priority uh, because you do get a jewel for clearing Margin Boo Max Luck and a jewel for clearing Devora Max Luck. We can assume, as you can see, these characters blocked out by question marks. It has been confirmed are part of the We Never Learn feature festival. It's not an ensemble. It's not like featuring the series or anything like that. It is a straight up feature festival that will be following the, <laughs> the Dragon Ball event. Bizarre, bizarre, because... There are a lot of signs here pointing towards the fact that we're going to be getting a limited during this event. I don't know if that's true, but as far as I know, we've never had a feature festival that, that has not included a limited. Even more obscure series like Boba Bo got a limited. And, as you can see, they have another character here that when you get them to max luck, you get a skill jewel for. And that is only for the ultimate and higher up here. So, Deborah is ultimate class. He is countered by a limited, and you get a jewel for maxing him. Majin Buu is a catastrophe. He is countered by a limited, and you get a buddy skill jewel. So perhaps we are getting a We Never Learn limited. To be honest, I've really wrapped my brains with this event. I don't know how they're going to do it. And I may well have a video uh, at some point, kind of sharing my thoughts on what I might have done with an event like this. Um... But I'm curious. I'm curious and I'm somewhat excited. Uh, but don't worry about this part just yet because that, that event doesn't start until like the 20th. You've got plenty of time. Uh, just make sure to clear all of these if you can. If you can. Obviously, you don't want to miss out on the, on the jewels and stuff. But I would say the main goal, the main goal, especially if you're a beginner, get these rubies. Yeah, 300 rubies for maxing Videl, 300 for maxing Great Saiyan Man. It's not that hard. And we'll talk about those events in a little bit. They also have the Strengthening Island stages open with double drop rate. And we have Super Success times free. Um, so this is a very good opportunity to max out your box. And then we also have a daily gift campaign. This was really good. This was really, really good. 60 stamina on 600k coins. And it's actually 120 stamina on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and that's running straight through till June. So, if there's any characters you've been missing out on, good chance to max them. If you're low on gold, good opportunity to farm gold. If you uh, if you need event drops, good opportunity to farm some event drops. So make the use of this stamina while you can. Um, and we have a new permanent daily mission. The permanent daily mission um, is just to clear a day of the week medal stage. I, I guess just to remind you to do that, because it's not a hard thing to do. Uh, so just go to the events tab, uh, go to the uh, 
the other section, not the one with the current events, but rather the, the Evolvers Island, the one with uh, the jump souls and the books and stuff, and you've got to do the daily medal stage. Um, get 100k coins for missions, which is really nice. And you should be doing that anyway, because that medal store where you can trade in for tickets is really, really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Make sure to take part in all those campaigns. Uh, now, mentioning the units from before, Great Sayer Man, our new uh, Transcendent Class event, our first new Transcendent Class event. We have noticed a massive uptick in the amount of Transcendent Class events. I have a feeling part of that is just because they want some of these characters to be more accessible to beginners, which definitely makes a lot of sense, you know, over the course of the anniversary, coming out of the anniversary and coming into uh, Dragon Ball. They're going to have a lot of new players who maybe aren't as able to clear the more difficult stages so i guess it does make sense um a great sayer man who i would have speculated could have been gacha but there is a part of me that feels that would have been a bit fucked up because we've already got four standard gacha gohans and if you're gonna make anyone from this section standard gacha probably should have been videl uh but i could i could see the argument for great sayer man i could totally see the argument for great sayer man um, but this was the first event that went live during this feature festival and as far as a unit goes Great Sayer Man is He's there <laughs> He's certainly there um, Inflicts 340% damage that ignores damage reduction to one enemy Okay, that Okay, <laughs> it's really not that I'm... It is a transcendent class, so you're not expecting that much, I guess Um it's very, it's very basic, I would say. It's very basic. Um, his passive to go with that on the front line is to reduce shock damage received for himself by 2, 250, which I think is pretty good. And they've clearly made him specifically to counter the Bora. The Bora stage has damage reduction and shock. So they have made him specifically to be a 99 luck lead for that stage, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, and there's a f I think there's a few instances of that in this... Uh, in this particular feature festival where a character is a hard counter for one thing in particular rather than specifically trying to be made into like a super cool or super unique unit they were like this is just going to be a hard counter for this sometimes that's fine sometimes that is just fine uh his passive also gives you an attack boost when your hp is 80 percent or less it's okay he's very good for deborah beyond that he may have some use in some places, but definitely very good for Deborah. So it's very nice of them. And again, like I said before, helping out newer players, they can literally go grab Great Sayer Man, and they have got a solid front row for the Deborah stage. The support skill for three turns boosts the ultimate attack damage of green team members by 21%. Uh, for one turn, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for special class team members by three. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Obviously, reducing the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble does negate bubble extension that might be on your team. And a little boost to ultimate attack damage. It's okay. It's certainly okay. On an eight turn cooldown, probably won't see that much use because there's quite a lot of good bubble reducers already but he is there he is there um moving on we have next up the deborah stage i was mentioning before it is an ultimate class stage it is that little bit trickier than the transcendent class stages tend to be um it did take me a little while to work out an auto team but i got there in the end Turns out when you have when you have limited, it does <laughs> it does get a little bit easier. When you could just throw like a Kaioken Goku in there, it does make it a little bit easier, obviously. Um, but his stage is a little bit tricky, uh, so it's cool of them to include the Bora, uh, not the Bora, Great Sayer Man to help out with that. And uh, as far as a unit goes, as far as a unit goes, it inflicts three hundred and thirty percent damage to one enemy, and for two turns, inflicts ninety one hundred shock. And then that shock will be increased based on the number of bubbles you pop times 310. So a two-turn shock. Shock's a little bit of a tricky one because it is a two-turn shock, but that first turn of shock, you don't really get the benefit. 
I feel I don't know. I I think it's it's okay. It's okay. Um, I, I again I've said this before. I definitely prefer Burn and Freeze to Shock and Cyclone. Um, but you know he's free. He's a free unit, so it's fine. Um, his passive reduced the number of bubbles, uh, reduced the number of turns of bubbling effectiveness for this unit by two. That's fine. Perfectly good resistance. And then during turns four to eight of the adventure, boost this unit's attack by 24%. So it's restricted. It's not a HP restriction. It's, it's a turn restriction, which I'm not a fan of. And four to eight seems like a really weird arbitrary point of time to have that attack boost but okay not a fan of that passive really uh, the first part's fine second part weird very weird uh and the support for one turn boosts the attack of yellow team members by 50 percent and for two turns weaken this unit's buddy by 20 percent um it's it's you know i i get what they're going for i certainly get what they're going for um, and there is definitely situations where you could make use of it. Um, I personally probably won't, but I, I get what they're going for. They give you an attack boost for free that uh, at one point would have been definitely standard gacha only. Uh, but in exchange, you are weakening your unit's buddy. If your unit has weakening immunity or weakening reduction or... Um, if you're planning to uh, burst and it's not going to matter if you're weakened next turn. Like, th there's a lot of scenarios where this is perfectly fine. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how much use I'd get out of it, but hey, uh, it's usable. It's certainly, certainly usable. Especially if you are lacking in better options. Uh, so next up is the farming stage for this event. Um, if you haven't caught on by this point, they do have these tickets available every month and they're tied to the month you get them in. So the idea is they could be more generous with tickets knowing that you won't hoard them because there is no point in hoarding the April tickets or the May tickets or the June tickets because the pool is not going to update on those tickets. It is They are tied sort of to that month. So you can summon with them at any point but there's no value to hoarding them. The, whereas the multi-tickets and the 10% and the tickets, yes, those will update at some point early next year. So people might hoard those. Um, what you do with your tickets is up to you. But personally, with these multi-tickets, uh, not the multi-tickets, the monthly tickets, I'm just pretty much burning through them uh, the second the opportunity arises. Um, but these events are good. I would say they have definitely made the farming slower on these events. Um, on the ones during the Kimetsu no Yaiba event, which I don't think I made many videos. I, I don't think I made any videos about the Kimetsu no Yaiba event, but there was a Kimetsu no Yaiba event. Um, and it was pretty cool. Uh, I did have stuff to do, so I didn't make, didn't make any videos on it. Uh, but I did stream. I did stream it. Um, yeah, the... The farming for Kokushibo on that event was agony. Absolute agony. And the fact that we had other stuff to farm during that, uh, it was a pain in the ass. But really, the whole point of these events is they are a stamina sink. They don't want you to have loads of stamina, because if you have loads of stamina, you're going to go and use it on getting shitloads of event drops or gold or whatever. And then those things don't have the same value when they try and give them out as incentives later um so they want you to feel like wow thank you so much for the extra stamina thank you so much for all these goodies that you're giving me but you gotta work for them you gotta farm these events hard um and i'm fine with it i'm fine with it some people aren't but um it's whatever and as you can see there are a lot of boosted characters for this event but the top boosters will be um <laughs> the the primo quality units uh yeah, so any of the new standard gacha units, any of the new limited units, or Vegito from the anniversary. Um, I, which so far, I have none of these, and I don't know if I'm going to get any of those, so that farm may be just a little bit longer. But from this event, we also get the Super Dragon Ball tickets, 
which is an upgraded version of the old Dragon Ball Gacha ticket. And this one includes all the new standard Gacha units, basically all the Dragon Ball standard Gacha units. So go nuts. Um, also a great opportunity to max out Krillin or Piccolo's luck if you haven't already. Um, I believe their events are still on uh, for evolving them, so make sure you do those if you haven't. Um, and we also have a Legend Summon. Don't think we have any information on what the Legend Summons do just yet. Um, but this one's coming out on the 11th. One of two Legend Summons coming out during this event. And if you're wondering what stages are the highest priority, uh, especially if you're a new player, you might not know what to farm. There's a lot going on. Um, Transcendent class events are number one priority because they're easy to do and the rewards are good, especially this time around. You're going to be getting a bunch of rubies for doing them. And then I would say this event is the second highest priority because these events don't come back that often. So you want to max this while you can still max it. Because later, they might they might bring this event back. Or they might put this Legend Summon in the store. And then you're going to have to use your Versus medals on them. Which nobody wants to do. Uh, and it's a waste of medals. So max this out first time around if you can. Um, next up we have Majin Buu. This would be an example of an event that you probably could skip if you couldn't be bothered with it. If, it, if it's too hard for you, if you're finding the amount of events you have to farm a little bit overwhelming, this one will come back regularly. The only thing you're missing out on is the initial rewards they are giving you uh, for doing it this time. So I would say at least get him to 6 star. At least get him to level 99. But you don't necessarily have to max luck him this time around unless you're going for that extra reward of the jewel that comes with him same goes for Deborah. make sure you get a copy make sure you get it to max skill make sure you get it to level 99 but for max luck only if you are capable of comfortably beating it and uh you can just get it done but margin boo kid boo um with the stupidest event name ever the stupidest event name ever. I had so much trouble actually finding this in the manga. And unfortunately, some of you may know this already. Some may not. Um, even if you can find the exact, exact characters in Japanese, in the original manga, when you find the official Viz translations for the Dragon Ball manga... Uh, they're really bad. <laughs> they're really bad. They change so much stuff. They didn't need to change. And oh, it's awful. Some of the, some of the dialogue is just completely different. And you know, it, it's fine. It's readable, but it doesn't help when I'm trying to come up with event names and, and skill names and stuff. Uh, so pain in the ass, if I'm honest. Pain in the ass. But we're here. And we've got our Margin Boo event. Let's take a look at Margin Boo's skills. Uh, inflict 355% damage to one enemy and inflict 40% reversal damage. 3% in tower. So, Margin Boo is a reversal unit. A free-to-play reversal unit. The first ever. He's essentially a baby version of the uh, limited Giyu we got recently. And this means that his damage is going to be pretty good for a free-to-play unit. I personally probably won't use him that much because reversal is kind of situational, too situational for me. Um, but you could certainly get some good damage out of him as a free-to-play unit. It's not bad. If you don't know what reversal is, it inflicts damage based on the difference between your current HP and your max HP. So the lower your HP is, the higher your damage is. Um, but that doesn't necessarily apply because obviously... You need your max HP to also be high. So, something, something to try. To try and make the best of. Um, I think you could do some good damage with him, at least. For a free-to-play. For a free-to-play. Uh, his passive reduced the number of buddies sealed by buddy skill seal for this unit by 1. And when your HP is 70% or less, boost this unit's attack by 20%. Kind of works in his favor, you know, uh, he gets a buff at low HP and you're going to want to operate at low HP because that's when he's going to be doing more damage anyway with his ultimate attack, so that makes sense. And he reduces buddy skill seal, and I find buddy skill seal really annoying, so that's fine. 
not too bad. Not too bad as a front line. His support reduced the number of turns of guard on all enemies by one. Very useful. Not that many units do that. And for two turns, boost the attack of blue team members by 25%. That's an okay little bonus to the guard reduction. Not awful. Not awful. Good utility support. And ultimate attack. There's some potential there. There's certainly some potential there. I know a few people are definitely going to try and, and run uh, Kid Boo as a new lead. Uh... And obviously, you can get the costume for beating the highest difficulty. Uh, and I, I don't know how hard it's going to be. Because we just had a Kaza that was really hard. And that Kimitsu no Yaiba event felt like a beginner event. And they still made a Kaza really hard. So even though this Dragon Ball event kind of feels like a beginner event, I could maybe see them making Martian Boo really hard. Especially because the unit he's coming with, the limited, is very good. So... <laughs> We'll see. We will see. Um, but that could happen. That could happen. Next up, we have Videl, the Transcendent Class event, Mr. Satan's daughter. Um, Videl, let's look at her skills as a unit. Again, this is one of the units you will want to max out during this event for sure, for sure. Inflict 307% damage to one enemy and for three turns, reduce their attack by 6%. Not great, but attack down does sometimes see some use there are times you, when you want to constantly debuff your enemy and it's a free turn attack down so okay okay it's usable certainly usable um the passive reduced the number of turns of bubbling effectiveness for this unit by two and boost this unit's attack by 18 percent so does get an unconditional attack buff and a proper uh, resistance as well on the passive so very nice very nice and the support reduced the number of turns of bubble and effectiveness for yellow team members by one and for four turns boost the ultimate attack damage of dps balance and tank class team members by 16 percent not a bad support at all uh reducing turns of bubble and effectiveness is again like, not something that doesn't happen, but it's, it's somewhat rare. It's somewhat rare in terms of supports. And the, the buff, the ultimate attack damage buff for three different classes, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Um, especially seeing as one of the only class, there's two classes missing, special and healer. Healer, admittedly, slowly... We are getting some units that do recovery based damage or our healer class that deal damage but it's it's rare it's still rare so i don't think you're missing out on too much it's a it's a nice little support it's a nice little support um not a bad unit not a, for a transcendent class not too shabby not too shabby at all uh next up we have unity battle kid boo which also gives a legend summon as one of the other events before did uh, and it gives us a goku stamp and a bunch of super dragon ball tickets uh they did say at some point they're gonna rework unity battle to make the rewards better or to make the ranking less like grueling or less less of a grind or whatever but i don't think that will be in effect just yet so probably just a normal unity battle a standard unity battle uh and again another case of a legend summon you are going to want to max this out this time around you are not going to want to max it out later when it gets added to the store so make sure you do it this time around and unity battle if it's a standard unity battle this one could be one of those ones that's a real pain like you actually have to try hard um but hopefully not hopefully hopefully not um and then returning events, we have a couple listed here. Um, this Margin Boo event is just a standard Margin Boo event. Nothing special there. This is a standard Margin Boo event. Nothing special there. Both of those will come back in normal rotation, so no rush to do those. Uh, but this event down here doesn't come back that often. This, this Great Demon King Piccolo event does not come back that often. Uh, I would highly recommend getting Demon King Piccolo to max luck if you can. And you'll also get a bunch of goodies from doing so, including books, including jump souls, scrolls, tickets, and even the Dragon Radar, which is free summons on Dragon Ball 
uh, on a specific Dragon Ball banner, which gives you some Dragon Ball characters. So not bad, not bad. Definitely worth doing. Uh, in terms of the other returning stuff, which was part of the countdown campaign, we have Yamcha's event, which again, not a priority. It doesn't come back that often, but all it is is a costume, nothing else. So don't don't prioritize it really. Um, again, a standard Freezer event that is in normal rotation, so no priorities there. Uh, full power freezer is already over sadly don't know why they ended it early because I still hadn't beaten it I only had a couple of days and I didn't really have time so I was kind of pissed about that but they did they did cut that one short uh, same with the Namek event bro there are four farmable characters from this event and a couple of them are pretty damn useful and it only came back for like a few days which kind of sucks and again the same with Nappa coming back in the Saiyan Saga story event they kind of did us dirty with those reprints, but whatever. I'm sure they'll come back again at some point. The, these two events should come back every time Freezer comes back. At least this one should come back every time Freezer comes back. So hopefully Freezer comes back again soon. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, farming the Piccolo Evolver. That's a daily stage. Make sure you're doing that every day. And farming the Krillin Evolver, which is a standard just farming an Evolver event. Make sure you do these. Make sure you get your Piccolo and Krillin to 6 star. And then feed all the dupes. Get them to 99 luck. Those are two easy 99 lucks that you can do. Um, and you like you just get you get them to 6 star and then you will get the dupes at some point. You will definitely get the dupes at some point. So you will get them up to 99 eventually. Um, and then the, the Future Trunks event, which... That doesn't come back that often, actually, now that I think about it. So probably worth doing this, get yourself Future Trunks and put him on his gadget. Same as the gadgets before, but give other little goodies here and there. So worth doing. Um, and these events, I don't think the costume stage for Vegeta comes back that often, but the Vegeta stage does come back fairly often. So just no, no rush there, no rush there. And these gacha, um, that one's already over. This catcher down here is not bad at all. You get a free five-star Dragon Ball character for 500 rubies. And then for 750, you get another one. And if for another 1,000, you get three more. You can only do run rotation, but you know what? It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, might be worth doing for a beginner, but at the same time, I do think there are better things to summon on during this event. So maybe give this one a miss. I definitely give this one a miss definitely not worth it um going back to the main post uh, we have the dragon ball tower boost they don't always announce this ahead of time but there almost always is a one like a tower boost right at the end of the event um and this is like the, the last three days of the event and then the following start of the next event and these tower weeks typically are not that popular <laughs> they're popular with the uh the hardcore pvp players uh, but for everybody else, it's a sad old time. <laughs> it's a sad old time. Um, yeah, be prepared to include Dragon Ball characters in your tower team. Probably a little bit easier than somebody have a tower boost because there are a lot of Dragon Ball characters. So have fun. Go nuts. Um, the limited gacha Sun Gohan. Ultimate Gohan. Um, finally here. We finally have a limited Gohan as well. Great Saiyan Man was the first event Gohan. And now Ultimate Gohan, the first limited Gohan. Uh, all the other ones that came before them were standard gacha. Don't know why, but okay. And now we have the Ultimate Gohan that a lot of people have been waiting for. And in terms of his skills, a little bit on the disappointing side. Not bad uh, no limiteds get released that are really bad nowadays um but a, a bit disappointing a bit disappointing uh, he inflicts 527 percent damage that ignores damage reduction to one enemy um okay as we mentioned before a uh, great saiyan man made specifically to counter deborah oh magohan is obviously going to ignore damage reduction as well because helping out killing deborah and for two turns, boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by 
and remove one shot from this unit. As I mentioned before, defeating Deborah will remove that one shot. So that's good. Um, so he, he's like, he's kind of like a green version of Suna. Uh, but this is sort of where the similarities stop. Because when you look at the passive, unconditional attack boost, 17%. That's good. Reduce damage received for this unit by 1,412k in tower. Really not a fan of that. I just don't like that type of passive. It can be okay. Don't get me wrong. It can be okay. Um, but it needs a little bit extra. And the little bit extra here appears to be when your HP is 60% or more, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for this unit by two. And I would have much preferred some bubble conversion there. I would have much preferred a, a little bit of something, something. He didn't really get it. That's still okay. And if you can keep your HP above 60%, he's only going to take five skill bubbles. That's pretty good. Um, I, I prefer the like the rainbow bubbles or, and stuff like that. Uh, I think sooner is better in that regard, but that's just me. And the support, convert a red bubble to a skill bubble, convert six yellow bubbles to green, and convert two red and three blue to heart for two turns. We can all enemies by 30%. It's a cool, cool little support. Not only are you getting a skill bubble, you're also getting weakening and a whole bunch of bubble conversion. That is not a bad support at all. I cannot see myself summoning just for a support though, even if I like the character a lot. So I'm afraid it is definitely going to be a miss for me on Sun Gohan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gohan. You, you deserve better. You deserve just, like, just a little bit better. Just needed to be a little bit better and I would have been down. But it's, it, it's just not quite right for me, unfortunately. Um, Sun Goku. Limited Gacha Sun Goku battle for the whole universe. Um, essentially a multi-stage unit. Uh, this this Goku is um, Super Saiyan 3 base form. And then when he uses his ultimate attack, which is the Super Spirit Bomb, uh, he turns back into base form to use the Spirit Bomb. And then in the process, goes Super Saiyan to finish it off the same way he does at the end of the Majin Buu saga. Very, very cool. The animations look very, very good. Um, I can... I, I gotta be honest, I'm not a big fan of him being Super Saiyan 3 in base form. I know that it's fairly true to the arc, I guess, and if you wanted to show Super Saiyan 3, like, it kind of makes sense. Um, but... I, I'm not a huge fan. I would have preferred him to just be in his, like, base form, kind of beaten up, and then use the... Spirit Bomb goes Super Saiyan. That would have been fine for me. But, you know, can't complain too much. Can't complain too much. Uh, and you can see the base form here and then the, the artwork of him actually doing the Super Spirit Bomb. Let's look at his skills. He is... <laughs> he's quite good. <laughs> he's quite good. Inflict 140% of this unit's max HP as damage to one enemy. Cut your own HP by 3%. Charge the Legend Summon Gauge by 2%, and for two turns, boost the auto attack damage of yellow team members by 20%. So, that buff at the end is very strong. Very, very strong. The damage is going to be quite high. He's got almost 20k HP. He's doing 140% tank damage, HP based damage. So, it's going to be quite good. And then, yeah, he cuts his own HP by 3%. That's not a big deal. You'll be able to deal with that with like passive healing, popping heart bubbles and stuff most of the time. And charging the ledger summon gauge by 2%. It's not an astronomical amount, but could come in handy here and there. Uh, the main thing for me is this is this ultimate attack damage buff. 20% for two turns on top of already doing quite a lot of damage. Very, very good. And then the passive boost issue is ultimate attack damage by 15%. Unconditional 15% buff there. Very nice. He is immune to bubble and effectiveness. Very nice. And during turns 2 to 4 of the adventure, reduce the number of bubbles required to create a skill bubble for this unit by 3. Not very hot on that. <laughs> I don't like that part of his skill. Everything, I would say everything else uh, is either like really good or like in the case of the HP cut, it's manageable. I can live with it. The last part of that passive, 2 to 4, reduce the bubbles required to get a skill bubble. I guess that's one of those things where it's like, yo, if you want to use them in PvP and you use them in slots 2 to 4, then you're going to get this bonus. And I get that, and I can see how that would be useful, and you're going to be able to do quite a lot of damage. 
but in terms of day-to-day -day use not a fan not, not a fan of that part everything else though i would say he is a top tier unit he is definitely going to see a lot of use in tower he is definitely going to see a lot of use in general as a buffer and he's going to be doing pretty good damage as a buffer as well so very nice unit very very nice unit and the support convert a random bubble to a skill bubble with 130% base damage and then excluding skill bubbles and block bubbles convert the second row from the left and the second row from the right to yellow so it's like the yellow version of like the ace luffy skill very good it's a very good support so he's a very good unit very very good unit um if you're thinking about pulling i would definitely go for goku over gohan um uh, obviously if you have a lot of really good yellow units and you really like gohan and you need more green units okay in that situation go for gohan most of the time though for most people if you're gonna pull during this event goku is the way to go um and if i was pulling which i don't think i am but if i was goku would be the one for me Next up, we have the new heroes gacha, introducing Gotenks, Super Saiyan Gotenks, and Angel Vegeta, which is fine. It, it's maybe a little bit uninspired, but I, I've come to realize that even though Dragon Ball is like 500 chapters long, does sort of use the same characters over and over again for a lot of the arcs. Majin Buu Saga being an exception, but it is quite a long saga. And we visited that one a few times, so even some of the more, some of the newer characters, like for example Gotenks, this is already like our second version of him. We could get a third, we could get a fourth, who knows? Um, but we do have Gotenks. Um, let's talk about Gotenks. Gotenks is a red unit, inflicts 455% damage to one enemy. If the enemy has counter attack, inflict an additional 100% damage. And negate counter attack up from all enemies. Now I should point out counter attack and counter attack up two different things. Counter attack is when you get attacked, you attack back. Counter attack up is when you get attacked, you boost your attack. Um, and Gotenks deals with both. Gotenks does deal with both. And 555% damage against units that have counter attack is quite high. Uh, he's a bit of a specialist in that regard. We do like these specialist units um, because when a stage comes up that they're good for, they are very good for it. And if a stage doesn't come up that they're good for, they're, they're okay. They're not great. <laughs> they're really good at what they do and not much else. So it's fine. When you come up against a green stage and they have counter, they're in trouble because Gotenks is going to fuck them up. The passive also gives 85% counter guard, um, so that's good. Taking a lot less damage from counter and dealing a lot more damage to counter. What more could you want? And an unconditional 30% buff to ultimate attack damage, which means you'll be dealing against units that have counter attack, 555% damage plus an unconditional 30% buff to the ultimate attack damage before you hit them. That's insane. That is insane. Um, of course, that buff is always active, but to get the best out of the unit, you will want to use it against, of course, units that have, or bosses that have, counter attack. The support, convert a total of three red, green, blue, and yellow bubbles to rainbow. It's a nice little bit of conversion. Not many bubbles, though. For three turns, boost the ultimate attack damage of this unit's buddy by 55% and reduce the number of turns of Cyclone for this unit's buddy by two. Pretty nice support. I can definitely see that seeing some use, um, possibly in PvP, for that 55% ultimate attack damage buff and reducing Cyclone by two. Uh, I can definitely see that seeing some use. Um, not a big fan of these supports, but hey, that's just me. That's just my preference. Um, and I think as far as the unit goes, very good at what he does very very good at what he does beyond that i probably wouldn't use him that often um definitely not a must summon for me definitely not a must summon and then we have angel vegeta and angel vegeta inflicts 452 percent damage to one enemy and if the enemy is special class an additional 55 percent damage which is 
It's okay. There's not really a lot going on there. But obviously special class enemies are going to be a lot more common than, say, for example, enemies that have counter buffs. So, okay, the buff being a little bit smaller and there not being a lot going on with this ultimate attack does kind of make sense, I suppose. Uh, the passive reduced the number of turns of bubbling effectiveness for this unit by two. That's pretty good. And during turns four to nine of the adventure, boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by 35%. Um, again, four to nine? What is up with these random arbitrary buffs? I don't understand. There may be a reason for this at some point. I don't know. Like, you could maybe make an argument that this is good for... Or you know what is probably good for the Margin Buu unit battle, I guess? Because you'll have the buff for the last few turns of the unity battle. <laughs> Beyond that, just seems a bit silly to me to have a buff <laughs> from turns 4 to 9. But whatever, I, I suppose it's fine. The bubble effect ineffectiveness reduction is good. 35%. Gotenks has 30% unconditional. Vegeta only gets 35% conditional. That's strange to me, but okay. Um, and the ultimate attack, it's, it's okay. A little bit uninspired. It's okay. And the support. Convert a random bubble to a skill bubble. Convert a total of four red, green, blue, and yellow bubbles to rainbow. And charge Legend of Summon Gauge by 20%. Quite a big fan of this. You get skill bubble and Legend of Summon Gauge charge as well. And you get a few rainbow bubbles too. Very, very nice. Um, probably, again, probably wouldn't summon for him. <laughs> if they had done an event ticket, I definitely would have purchased it. But they specifically only put two characters in the gacha, and when they do that, they don't do the event ticket. So, no event ticket for me, I suppose. And then, what else is there? There's the defeat gachas. As always, I do not recommend you summon on these. They are not worth summoning on. I know you've, you might see Ray there, and you might be tempted, but the rest of the units back there are quite old. So, I would not recommend summoning. And this is the other defeat gacha. Admittedly, has... Torpedo Go, one of the best units in the game. It's got the new Hijikata Toshino from earlier this year. Again, I could see how you would be tempted. But I, I, I must say to you, do not summon. Please do not summon on this. Um, these gacha, however, returning limited gachas for Goku and Vegeta, for Margin Vegeta, for Gotenks, and for Bardock. Uh, if you wanted to go for one of these, Goku and Vegeta would not be a mistake. Very nice unit. Double tap unit. Very, very cool. Especially if you don't have a double tap. And Gotenks is the limited yellow weakener. Again, very, very good. Very good unit. Definitely worth going for. I would not go 9 multis for Margin Vegeta. He does have some redeeming qualities despite how old he is. But I would not go 9 multis for him. And Bardock is obviously much newer than Margin Vegeta and definitely has some uses, definitely has some redeeming qualities. But if I was going to summon for anything during this event, Gotenks, Oak and Vegeta would be much higher priority for me and much higher priority, maybe maybe not higher priority than them, but kind of higher priority because it's a newer unit. I would probably be summoning for the new Goku. Um, if I was summoning, which I don't think I am, um, and then we also have the sales. Uh, the Goku Day sale is actually pretty good. I'm definitely going to buy this pack when it comes out. 490 yen for 500 rubies. Not too shabby. Uh, this uh, this one gives you a choice of Dragon Ball characters. Plus 1,000 rubies for 4,900 yen. I don't buy these packs. 4,900 yen packs that give you a choice ticket. I do not buy them. Um, but some people do. I am not, I'm definitely not one of those people though. And I do not recommend buying them. And... This sale pack's not bad either. 1,500 rubies for 3680 yen. But again, that, that's going to depend on you. I think this pack is way, way, way better, but you can only buy it once. So that's, you know, I'll, I'll buy this one for sure. This one I'll, I'll think about. I never buy these packs, but if you're low on jewels, sure, I suppose they're fine. Um, I, I think the one where you get 3k rubies for 10k yen is a little bit better, but, you know. Some people just want the jewels. Some people just desperately want the jewels. And in that case, I suppose it's fine. But anyway, that's, that's pretty much it for this event. Uh, hope you guys are now well informed about what's going on. Uh, and let me know how your summons go. Uh, because I'm probably not going to be summoning. But I've seen a lot of lucky people so far. And I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of people summoning for this Goku. Uh, way more than the uh, Gohan. And... I don't know. I, I, I'm wishing you all the best. Wishing you all some good luck. And yeah, I'll see you all next time.